Hey YouTubers and welcome back to the Ray of All Trades channel. Today we got ourselves a Husqvarna 435. Not bad condition. Uh, user complained that it was just leaking oil. A lot of oil. I guess more than it's supposed to. So normally I would fill it up, let it sit, and make sure that it was leaking oil. Uh, just to verify. But in this case, as you can see... I don't think I have to do that. Yeah, it's a lot of oil on there. And I promise it wasn't running on my bench. So, doing a quick search on the internet, found out that there is a common problem with this model. The oil line, I guess, comes loose on the oiler. So let's see if we can take it apart and find out if it symptoms match what I was seeing. So, I'll try to do my best to explain this along the way. I'm trying to make sure I stay in frame here. Let's go ahead and get the bar off. See what we get. Meh, normal amount of gunk. We'll clean that up before we reassemble it. So, go ahead and pull all this off. Watch out for chains, they're sharp. Of course, they're meant to be there. Any good when they're not, right? your fingers anyways. So, pull this off with a sprocket in the back. Get that out of the way. Check the condition of the bar real quick. It does have oil on both sides. And more importantly, and I kind of want to stress this, if not once, about seven times today. As I was saying, <laughs> more importantly, I want to stress, whatever side is facing the chainsaw itself, the body of the chainsaw, you got to make sure that this hole is clear. And the easiest way is, let's see if the video picks it up. Can you see the pick coming through? So right about there, you can kind of see the pick coming through. You want to make sure that's clear. So never assemble a bar if it's clogged like this one so this is normal to have one side clogged and one side open obviously the clogged side was facing down and the other side was open but what you want to do is take a pick a toothpick a um, piece of wire compressed air anything and you need that passage to be open because what happens is the oil comes out here comes out of this passage, goes into this hole, and works its way up to where the chain is riding. And that's what lubricates your chain. So very important to keep that clean. So I uh, can't tell you how many brand new chains get thrown onto a bar and nobody ever bothered cleaning it and they burn up the chain and the bar. So let's see. So this is full of oil. So obviously it's not a lack of oil getting up to the appropriate place. Let's get some of this cleaned off of here so we can make sure we don't miss anything. If you use compressed air to clean this stuff out, wear safety glasses, y'all. It gets in your eyes quick. It'll make for a really short project getting finishing up for the day. So 
I just want to get majority of this out of the way. We'll clean it up before reassembly. If we can find out what's going on with it. So, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it says off right here. And it has an arrow pointing that direction. All right? So, you want to be able to take off this clutch that direction. This particular saw, we're going to put a chisel in here, um, probably right here where these grooves are. Give it a quick smack with a hammer and see if we can spin it off that direction. Some of them have a hex nut right here and you would do it the exact same way. So this side of the saw comes off counter rotation. The other side of the saw comes off normal rotation. And the reason is because the saw engine always spins in this direction. When I pull the cord, you can see it's going the same way. Well, if you think about it, the compression of the saw is always tightening that motor. So picture this has resistance going that direction because it comes off that direction. The motor is pushing that direction while there is normal stagnant resistance this direction. So it's always tightening. That's the thought behind it. And I don't know that I've ever seen a saw that goes the other direction. So let me see if I can get a chisel and a hammer and we'll see if we can get that loose. I'd like to see the oil. We're going to try this, and very likely the vibration is going to knock the camera off the table, but we're going to try anyway. So I load the saw up. Basically, I push to the compression stroke. Well, I don't know that it's going to occur. Let's see if we can do it anyway. If this doesn't work, we're going to have to um, stop up the cylinder. This isn't going to work too well for me. So, on to plan B. Let's see. Just one time. Oh, what do you know? It came loose. Alright, if it didn't come loose, what I would have done pulled off this cover, pull out the spark plug, and I usually keep some soft string laying around. You can use shoelaces, just keep the plastic stuff off of there. And you can push it down into the spark plug hole. Um, and what it's doing is it's binding up that area at the top of that saw, uh, keeping in mind that you wanna make sure that you get every piece of it back out um, and uh, uh, that nothing's left behind and nothing binds. So I have had it get stuck before, and take a while to get out um, and I've never had to disassemble the saw to get it out of there um, but I guarantee you that my time's coming so anyhow it didn't take a whole lot of pressure that was not a very big hammer or chisel um, but anyway let's go ahead and just spin this off the rest of the way again counterclockwise so I always lay my parts down in the same direction I take them off um, so this is your uh, clutch and this is the clutch drum. So these springs right here, um, as the saw spins up, spins faster, these two slide apart and they grab, or they, they connect the motor, which is, which is right here, to the drum itself, which is driving the chain. So when the RPM slow down enough, the springs take over and pull it back away. So not to be confused with the chain brake, which is, right here this metal band is attached to the arm and it grabs the outside of this clutch drum so a couple different pieces pretty simplistic in action but pretty ingenious if you also think about it so this is your clutch drum bearing you always want to make sure that's greased up before it goes back on and let's see what else we have here let's see This is my oiler, excuse me, this is my oil gear. So the clutch drum is uh, fitting into that gear, those two grooves. This, I'm learning along with you guys as I take this apart. This metal band becomes my teeth for driving the oil pump 
the oil pump is right here. So as it's spinning, it's turning this. Right? So as it spins this, it is a it's a simple pump. It's basically an opening and a closing with inside a valve. So as it's spinning, that opening allows oil to come in. And as it closes, it allows that oil to go out a different hole and pushes it eventually up through and out this, this hole up here. So kind of a simplistic design, like I mentioned. But at the same time, invented by people a lot smarter than I am. Let's see. see anything really out of place yet except for that screw that I just dropped so let's get this cover off of here and see oh that's kind of cool all right, so this is what's turning with this gear. It is allowing the oil to come through this hole. I can't see it. Come through this hole right here, which is coming from the oil tank within the saw, which is right here. If you can see it, probably not. Um, anyway, so it's spinning and it's pulling oil in here and it's coming up this tube all the way up to here and this hose has an opening right there which was right here which is the other side of that um, saw opening so give me a second I'm gonna clean this thing up and see if I can get a better look at what's happening other than just a saw that's you know dirty so hold on well, through the process of cleaning this thing up, I can see exactly how this works. So like I was describing before, there is a flat spot right there and it fits up inside here. And as this spins, that flat spot is grabbing oil from this side out of the tank of the chainsaw and pushing it up this tube and spitting it out this long groove. So this long groove is there because I showed you the bar. The bar has one little hole, but if you think about it, the chain has a lot of adjustment. So that bar can move back and forth quite a bit. It needs to be able to line up with something. So you'll see in all of them, they'll either have a long slot or they'll have a long tube like this allowing it to come through. So I think if I'm looking at this correctly, this is not round anymore it's more oval shape i have a feeling that that's lending to our problem let me see if i can line it up and see what it sits against maybe you guys can help me figure it out the part is about uh 20 bucks this tube that fits this so it looks like yeah. Well, looking at it, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, it fits inside this groove right here, right? Um, fits in there just like that. When I pull this out, like I said, I'm looking at a flat spot or an oval shape right there. Basically, my diagnosis was it was not correct is what I'm trying to say. But let's see if I can point it out to you. This... There's a little bit of a ridge right there, which forced it to be a not flat shape. But since the oil is leaking out of here and basically going all over the place, my thought was to take that, wherever I dropped it, to take this seal, which it looks like they tried to use this lip as like an O-ring to seal it. And I'm thinking that at some point the bar got loose and allowed this to vibrate out just a little bit. Probably got some dirt behind it, 
um, like you saw, it was fairly dirty, and all chainsaws are, right? Um, but allowed this to vibrate out, allowing just enough dirt to get behind it to allow oil to pass by here. So, I think I'm going to use some um, oil and gasoline resistant. It really just needs to be oil resistant, but I happen to have some oil and gasoline resistant uh, 1184, which works really well, stays tacky for... I don't know if it's, a, if it's forever or a really long time. Um, but I'm just going to seal up right around that edge and see if that'll hold it in place a little bit better. The guy that owns it's a friend of mine. And um, if it starts leaking again, I'll just come back and, hey, we'll make another video out of it. How does that sound? Um, but uh, we're going to try to save him about 20 bucks on this, at least in the parts. And, of course labor I usually end up drinking so love my Corona beer so get that cleaned up I'll tell you what I am going to spray it off with a little bit more brake, brake part cleaner try to avoid using a gum cutter or carb cleaner things like that I've lost a bunch of handles to uh, screwdrivers over the years that stuff doesn't evaporate as quick and it definitely does its number on plastic and whatever so I tend to lean more towards the brake parts cleaner or sometimes just plain rubbing alcohol in a lot of cases so friends let's talk about what the possible problems with this were I know I decided that uh, likely it was dirt in here the reasoning behind it is this pumps from the bottom up, right? So as this is spinning, it's pumping physically from the bottom up the saw, up this tube and out. So if there was pressure on the tank um, from heat and whatever, and it pushed the oil up, I could see that occurring. Um, if this shaft right here was leaking because it was a really, really thin oil, I mean, I could see that happening. But neither of those were really the case. Um, so the simple fact that it was a gravity leak more so um, than anything else makes me think that it had to be out of this hole on the saw leaking past this side. That's my reasoning. I'm hoping I'm right. We'll find out, but so I'm just trying to clean it up really good. I'm using a product called uh, 1184, very similar to uh, Honda Bond, a uh, uh, Yama Bond, uh, things like that. It's a really good uh, uh, sealant. You can use it for base gaskets and things like that, but it's um, not as sensitive to gasoline as a lot of other products are. So I just want to put a little bit on there just as kind of a adhesive and then also to take up any kind of a gap. But like I said, the saw belongs to a friend of mine. So if it starts leaking again, he'll let me know. And I'll try something else. So. But that's, that's where my reasoning was why I came up with that solution. I'm kind of leaning towards a little bit of this sealant on the back side of that tube just to help hold it in place in case there was a you know deterioration things like that the proper way to do this obviously is to replace the tube right um, and if this was a regular customer obviously I would replace the tube not a regular customer it's a friend I'm trying to save some money and experiment a little bit see if I can make something work so a whole sense of accomplishment so let's get that sealed in there really well <clears throat> I don't know if y'all can see that but there is a <clears throat> excuse me a groove had some pizza while I was on break. Um, there's a groove there that that goes into, holds it in place, allows the gear, uh, the oiler to spin appropriately. 
Um, and like I showed you before, it takes that flat spot inside this tube and just pumps the oil out of the crankcase, or excuse me, out of the oil tank, up this tube and out to the bar. So just push that in really well. Make sure it's all seated well. I'm going to take this opportunity to clean up right around that crankcase seal. I'm sure you guys know. Well, maybe you don't. I don't know. Um, that crankcase seal um, prevents trash from getting in. One of the other things that that does, extremely important, is it holds the gases at the bottom of the crankcase in, keeps them from getting out. So trash around this seal will eventually wear that seal out prematurely, cause a vacuum leak, and cause the saw to run extremely lean. In other words, not enough fuel. And on a two stroke, that's extremely bad because the fuel is what holds the oil. So that's also your lubrication. So you get something running lean, which generally equates to a faster RPM. Um, it gets hotter, it runs faster, it has less lubrication, and there's a pretty good chance that it's not long for this world. So I've definitely had to repair my share of those. So got that cleaned out really well. Let's get this cleaned up. Until the saw comes back and I make another video, we really won't know if this is fixed because he doesn't use this saw a whole lot. But like I said, I'm feeling pretty confident in the repair. Just clean this up really well. And drop that seal in there and make sure that while it spins, it turns that gear. Oh, can you see that? I'm not sure if you can see that. As I spin this, it's turning the pump gear. So, just keep in mind that that uh, motor spinning it when it's running wide open, about 12,000 RPMs on this saw. So, I haven't looked it up, but it's probably pretty close to that. occurred to me I think I put those backwards yep that looks a little bit better good catch guys I heard y'all yelling at me in the background I'm gonna make sure when this tightens up that it sits flush like I said, I'm feeling pretty good that it was just dirt behind it. For the most part, I've got I've got quite a few Husqvarna saws. Most of them are the pro level saws, and you honestly can't beat those. I've got my share of steels too. Um, but power to weight ratio, Husqvarna's got it. So lots of tests on the internet prove me wrong, but. That's more of an opinion thing. When you can compare cut speeds and everything else, there's a lot of, um, how can I say it? There's a lot of chance for error because many things that could be different. I know people swap bars and chains and everything else, but every cut, um, just, just one cut hitting the dirt could drastically change your cut times, you know? So, I don't know that. I honestly don't know that it's that important. I don't know that anybody really cares that much. So it's more of a comfort level. Um, let me get some grease for this uh, clutch bearing. Looks, I would say it looks dry. Honestly, they all look like that. Um, you, the idea is to add a little bit of grease whenever you can. got a, uh, a bar grease gun and I just use that uh, 
Just smear some grease around there. I don't know, some people say it collects, um, makes it collect dirt, whatever else. Okay, I can agree with that. Um, you'd rather have a little bit of dirt in there than a dry bearing, especially, like I said, rotating it. 12,000 RPMs. That was a lot of spinning going on. So, on top of that, quite a few saws. You add grease into that hole right there, and then actually push the grease out. I don't see one on this saw, but anyway, it'll push the grease out onto that bearing. I can try it. I don't think it'll work, though. You would put it in the end like that and push. Yeah, this one's not going out. It's just coming out the end. So... When it does have a hole and it doesn't come out, all that was for was, you know, a puller, a spot to put a puller. Um, but more of the, uh, a lot of the higher end saws have a spot right here that you can add grease and the grease actually will come out where that um, bearing is. And the idea is that you can reach this without having to pull off your clutch and your drum and you can grease that bearing. So anyway, let's make sure that uh, while this is a, a part, sure that the teeth the driver teeth are good so when you get the wrong size chain these will wear out really premature but this is normal to have some wear basically that's the driver for the chain that's what's pulling on the chain right those teeth those line up inside that groove and you can see they always will fit into that exact same spot each time and that's what wears them out so Clutch drum is a normal, normal wear item, and uh, some actually have what's called a rim sprocket. So they don't have these teeth. What it has is um, just some uh, grooves and a sprocket, uh, or a looks like a washer, right? Like a star washer, fits over the top of it. And it has holes that these teeth fit into. It's called a rim sprocket. And uh, some, most, of the, most of the higher end saws will have a rim sprocket, but again, I've seen I've seen some nice, you know, um, saws that were built just like this. So, um, this is a, I'm going to take a guess, but I believe this is one of the Poland brand uh, Husqvarna's. Um, so, good saw. Um, it, has, it has served my friend really well for a long time. I think it's because he, he generally takes decent care of it and runs good, good uh, oil and um, gasoline. It just... Like everything else gets dirty over time so anyway so the um, clutch um, obviously it has the teeth that we hit on on this side and then this side does not have those teeth so obviously you know which side goes in remember it was also a backwards um, clutch so we're going to be turning it counterclockwise to tighten it Seems to be pretty well centered inside that drum. And we will, I don't want to use anything sharp like that. I want to take a little, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a more dull punch than like what we used to take it off to hit in here to tighten it up. <clears throat> so. Like I said, the saw motor itself will keep tightening this clutch as it goes. So it doesn't have to be extremely tight. Anyway, that's it for the uh, 435 with the terrible oil leak. Thanks for joining me. I hope you guys learned something. And if you did, smash that like button for me. It helps the channel. doesn't cost you guys a thing. Um, and uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Appreciate it.